This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. We got Mark Lobliner in here from Tiger Fitness, and I figured why we have somebody who's been in the fitness industry for many, many years, 27 years of training, and who's had uh, his own supplement company, still has his own supplement company, and has even sold and even still sells other people's supplements. Yeah. I'd love to ask him some questions and dive in deep on supplementation and what people need, but before we dive into that, I want you guys to always understand that we both share the same view that your food, your nutrition is massively important. So I'd love for Mark just to kind of give you guys a short explanation of, you know, what you think people should eat to just basically most of the people that watch my channel, they're usually trying to lose some body fat. They're usually yeah. just trying to get a little leaner. There are a couple people that are like bulking or whatever, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you agree too, is that bulking and, and dieting are kind of the same thing. It's just a manipulation of how much of those foods that we take in. But could you give people a brief synapsis, if you will, of uh, you know what should people be eating? What should they be doing? You know what, it, it depends on your goals. Um, I personally think people need to get nutrient rich foods. Um, the number one nutrient rich food there is, is meat. Meat is phenomenal. Meat is good. If you look at red meat, it has all the nutrients you need to survive, right? If you look at fish, it has Pay pretty much- Pay them to say all this, by the way. But I think, I think we've <laughs> just been around long enough and yeah. we can read some stuff and figure out. And we also know how we feel. If you've ever been on a diet that is only chicken or only turkey, and then you throw in some salmon or you throw in some bison or some red meat or some elk or some whatever, you notice you feel different. And that's because if you look at the nutrient composition, the nutrient density, of meat, of red meat, and chicken's fine. But if you really want the granddaddy, I love that wild fish, I love that beef. If you can get the free range stuff, the ones that are running around, I love eggs, you know, you got eggs on, and you spend extra to get the free range. They sell them at Target now. Um, they sell them everywhere. The good free range eggs where the chickens are running around, eating worms and getting sunlight, more vitamin D, healthy fats, meat vegetables you know you look at your broccoli your asparagus your they're pretty much calorie free mm -hmm. they fill you up they have fiber in them which you know some will argue will help with digestion and help with all that good stuff help with the you know the probiotic a lot hunger yeah it help with a the, tremendous amount with absolutely hunger. absolutely and of course if you're going to have a carbohydrate you look at something and we'll get into this like a sweet potato all right, extremely nutrient dense, 600 milligrams or so of potassium per eight ounces, depending on the sweet potato breed. All right, and check it out. If you were to take that in pill form, it would probably have a chance of stopping your heart. Potassium, so what I'm saying is nutrients derived from food are processed different from nutrients derived from pills, synthetic vitamins. However, what synthetic vitamins and all these different supplements, and we'll get into that, what they do is they basically supplement, they don't substitute. So I'm not gonna supplement healthy food with pills. I'm gonna use those pills to ensure that my body has either an optimal amount, because sometimes, sometimes more up to a point is better, or if I'm deficient because like I'm flying, like I'm, I'm traveling. I'm living off of whey protein and I'm living off of rice cakes because I'm dieting, I need to hit my macros. So I have to rely on supplements. We can't always be perfect. Supplements are an insurance policy. Sure, we're driving our car, we don't want to crash, but just in case we do, we got a deductible. So with your, so with your protein, your protein can sort of be almost unlimited in some sense. There's, I think so. It's not really gonna help, it's not really gonna participate in making you fatter. No. It's gonna help you be full, it's gonna help you to hold muscle, build muscle mm -hmm. and so forth. When it comes to fats, I heard you say earlier on our podcast about half a gram per pound of body weight mm -hmm. to about one gram per pound of body mm -hmm. weight. And then where would we stick our carbohydrates? Anything it takes to fill in the rest of your macronutrients. All right, so if protein set at a gram per pound, a gram and a half per pound, um, generally speaking, and then you have fat at 0.5 grams per pound and you have, let's say, a thousand calories left, you fill that in with carbohydrate and that would be, I believe, 250 grams of carbs. Right. So simple carbohydrate is simply to fill it because carbohydrate is for your body simple energy. Of course, for your goals. I like carbohydrate because your body likes it. Your body likes it as an energy source and I believe it really helps your training. And when dieting for a show or something, I believe that it makes it easier and it gives your body fuel. You could time it around training. It's fantastic, all right? So again, 
But if you're looking at overall health and you just, you've just you already dieted down, you don't want to get fat, I mean, honestly, you get by with some essential fats, um, throwing some salmon, some, some good stuff like that, some lean protein and some fibrous vegetables, and you're on a good, good path for your diet. And again, I'm also going to throw whey protein in there. And why? Not because I sell it, not because you sell it, but because we've noticed through all this stuff going on with immune compromised people, whey protein not only has growth factors in it, not only is a lean source of delicious chocolatey or whatever flavor you get protein, but also helps increase something called your GSR, AKA glutathione, which is a great, um, a great thing that you can intake that'll help your body to stave off a lot of health Antioxidant issues. And so Antioxidants, forth. yes, it's extremely active in the body. So those are what I recommend. Yeah, so I think that's a great start. And now we'll just dive into the supplementation. And again, all this stuff's gonna depend on what your goals are, but I really loved hearing Mark uh, talk about nutrition on our podcast earlier. So I wanted him to share that information with you guys because I think he put it really simply. And that's a really good place for you guys to start. And then you can manipulate the fat calories and the carb calories. You can manipulate all that to whatever your goals are. And we're going to kind of say the same thing here with your supplementation. So when it comes to supplements, uh, what are kind of the top five that you would recommend uh, for people that are they're lifting weights, they want to be jacked and tan, they're really trying to get after it every single day, they're trying to put the best effort they can in the gym. What are some things that you have seen over the years that are kind of standing up to the test of time? Uh, number one is going to start with food supplements. All right, so you need something to fill your nutrients, to fill them good, so if you're on the road or if you can't get a meal in. So that's where a whey protein comes into play. Again, there's a lot of immune benefits, the GSR factor and all that to whey protein. Whey protein, if you're dieting, is also anorectic, which means it does help stave off hunger. I believe there was a study done where they used whey protein for breakfast. People ended up eating less calories throughout the day because of its anorectic effects. And it's also the most biological, biologically available form of protein, which means that your body can use more of it for its intended purpose. Whereas egg is the benchmark at 100, whey protein is at 150. Well, how's it over 100? Well, because when they did the measurement for optimal protein, whey wasn't around. So whey actually outperformed the gold standard, which is the egg. So number one would be food products, whether it's a healthy protein bar, like the Outright Bar to give you protein, fat, and carbs, or a whey protein. I think the number one thing you need to look at is, again, food supplements. Food supplements because diet is number one, and if you can't get in proper nutrients, everything else means F all. You know, it's not a big thing. Um, number two would be health. You know, I like to see a health cocktail. I'm gonna put that all in one group. If whether I hit five is, I should hit five. So health supplements. Um, right now we have kind of like a vitamin mineral type of deal, right? Right now I've done a lot of reading on this and I'm really, really convicted on this. You know, um, with everything going on with viruses and all this crazy stuff in the world, um, you have things like quercetin, vitamin C, vitamin D. Okay, those are things that you can supplement that have actually been shown to have antiviral activity in the body and increase your immunity. There's also a supplement called, um, called Nectar from a brand I own called Ambrosia with Mike Rashid, Sean Torbati, and C.T. Fletcher, which has a bunch of organ health products in it for liver, su liver support, mm. kidney support, heart support, all that stuff. I'm gonna lump those together. So the number one thing be health supplements from vitamin C to vitamin D to quercetin, um, to any kind of health supplement that you can look at. And again, we could subcategorize yeah. that. But number one is, it you, you, doesn't matter how good you look, if you're sick or if you're dead. So there would be a health supplement. So vitamins, yeah. minerals, all that good stuff. And all these kinds of things can assist with just the, just your general well-being and, and your sleep. You know, if your sleep is thrown off, mm -hmm. your muscle gains are gonna be thrown off and so forth. So it's just staying healthy is huge. And vitamin D is beyond a vitamin. You know, vitamin D is, is basically a hormone. And so we've seen, you know, we've seen a lot of people that ended up uh, with various viruses. Uh, they usually have low vitamin D. There's 85%. Just, there's just more and more information all the time. And it's like, man, we just need to get people to get out in the sun more. That's mm -hmm. the number one way to get your vitamin D. Yes. And then secondly would be through food sources. I think a lot of times uh, whole fat dairy sources are, are pretty good sources of vitamin D. You can Google search some of this stuff and look it up yourself. And then the last thing we got is supplementation. And um, you also have, I forgot to say, zinc. Right. Zinc is phenomenal. Zinc's been applications and preventing anything from colds to helping get over them faster. Um, you know, the number two thing I'd look at is we're going to go really simple with this and people are going to, we're going to blow people's minds. I'm going to say electrolytes. 
Electrolytes, a lot of people, especially a lot of you guys trying to lose fat are low carb dieters. Low carb diets really need their electrolytes. And if you're getting an adequate liquid, adequate water, adequate fluids, and you're training and you're sweating, your body's gonna be deficient. And if you don't have salt, you don't have um, magnesium, you don't have all this stuff in there, these essential potassium, you know, you're in a potential for not only not being able to train correctly, um, there's many health applications to it. It's just not going to work as well. Your body's not going to function. You need that. So I would recommend either electrolyte. You have electrolytes. I've seen you recommend some. I make one called Naturalite. Um, there's, I like putting Himalayan uh, pink salt or sea salt on every single meal I eat. A lot of BCAAs yes. and EAAs that a lot of the companies sell. You know, just check and mm -hmm. see. Do they have uh, sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium? See if it has yep. some of that stuff mm -hmm. in there. It's almost always included because it makes sense to have it in there. They know that you're gonna take it during your workout. And even sometimes the pre-workout stuff uh, may have some of that in there as well. So just kind of check on that. How do we know uh, whether we're buying a, a, a decent, you know, just backing up a little bit to the whey protein. How do we know if we're buying like a decent form of whey protein is there some red flags that we can see when we look at the label like does it have something weird I know some people have concerns about uh, the types of sweeteners and stuff that are used in there um, what are, what are some of your thoughts about some of this, some of that stuff? They use very minimal sweeteners. I love sucralose it has grass status and we're taking such a small amount you're looking like an obscenely small amount it's not going to mess with the microbiome in your gut it's not enough for that in my opinion um, Again, all I agree, and I've been I've been taking these supplements a huge, for a huge fan of super twenty years, and it's know. delicious. And at the end of the day, if if it's not delicious, you're not going to drink it. So the benefits far outweigh the potential and um, non unfounded risks that people claim to exist. So you know, as far as whey protein, it, go with a company you trust. You know, I know you have your stuff, I have my stuff. Usually, if if, if there's a red flag, if the price is too low and it seems mm. too good to be true, chances are it is. And I also, depending on your carb and fat allowance, I like whey protein concentrate and some isolate. Concentrate is more intact, um, which means that it has more of the immune factors, mm. the, you know, the, the beautiful little IGF factors. Yeah, maybe you didn't uh, have to go through the same rigorous process bingo. as an isolate. And stuff yeah, like that. yeah. I mean, so again, go with a brand you trust that meets like, because if they're not going to meet label claim, they're going to lie anyway. Mm. And they're just going to lie to you. So go with people you trust, um, whether that's me, whether that's Mark, whether that's another brand that you find trustworthy. I, I hate to say this. It's almost like go with your gut mm -hmm. and go with if you trust that person who's representing that brand. And that doesn't mean the Instagram model with the greatest ass. What have we seen in terms of pre-workout? I know that you're a fan of pre-workout. Love it. Um, have you seen pre-workout be able to like enhance performance a little bit? Because I know sometimes there's some ingredients in there that maybe are, you know, my fans maybe aren't aware of uh, that can actually enhance your strength and some mm -hmm. things like that. So for a pre-workout, that would actually be my third. Um, because with pre-workout, we're gonna lump things together because there's a lot of things. I'm giving you some really easy cheat codes. Um, so basically creatine, Number one, number one supplement on the market, creatine. Take creatine. Shut up, take creatine. Man, woman, cutting, bulking, take creatine. Creatine monohydrate, creapure, I like that. You know, just get creatine, you know, bottom line. Um, beta alanine. Now, if you don't like the beta alanine tingles, there's actually something called peak O2, P E A K O2, which is a mushroom blend, believe it or not, an adaptogen, which has been shown head to head to do really well against beta alanine. Beta alanine and creatine are buildup, which means it's not an acute effect, but over time it builds up in your system. So I believe you need like 60 grams of beta alanine for it to really start doing its magic over a certain period of time. Basically just take three to six grams a day in divided doses. If you do get the tingles with Pico 2 same thing, one to two grams a day, but take it regularly at least four to five days a week. And betaine anhydrous or betaine nitrate are good ones. Betaine has tremendous studies in power. And those are three I'd look at, creatine, beta alanine, and or Pico 2 and betaine. What about something uh, that helps with a pump? Have you found any of these things to be beneficial to you personally? Or So you need an arginine precursor or lightness, right? So there's a few on the market. One is arginine silicate, which is nitrosigine. Phenomenal studies on heart health as well. I really like nitrosigine. Next to nitrosigine, you also have good old-fashioned L-citrulline. Look for anywhere from four to eight grams in that range. It, it doesn't have to be exactly whatever. Citrulline over citrulline malate. The studies on citrulline malate are done on the bonded version. All the stuff on the market is blended, meaning that the citrulline malate, it's actually combining. Mm. 
on a on a basically a molecular level, the crea- the uh, citrulline and the malic acid. When you blend it, you're basically taking cheap ass malic acid and citrulline and putting it in a blender. So generally speaking, I don't know of any products on the market that use actual citrulline malate. So go with the straight L citrulline anywhere between four and 10 grams would be fine. You can't really overdo it. Another one to look at is agmatine, which is fine. Um, arginine alpha ketoglutarate has actually been shown to not really do much, arginine in general. But there's a lot of uh, different options. Again, you got nitrosagene, you got the various forms of citrulline. I mean, there's options out there. Anything uh, in terms of uh, maybe some of the people watching are, you know, they like to run or uh, they like to do strongman stuff. Like, is there any cardiovascular stuff that you've seen that had a little bit of a benefit to give someone a little more zip? you know, and they're trying to run three miles and they're on mile number two or something like that. Absolutely. Uh, the Pico two, I just talked about the Pico two actually has an 11 time increase in VO two max in, um, in the studies versus placebo. Of course, mm-hmm. it's not like you're, you're just going to go 11 times. No, yeah, no, this right, is right. how much better it performed. It outperformed. So I don't want to, and also the, the beauty, like also there's another supplement called Physicor, which is great for strength. Physicor is actually shown to have two times increase in bench press. So you get people go like, well, what do you mean? Does that mean if I bench 250, I'll bench 500? No, it means that the other guy gained two pounds right. and this group gained four. So right. I'm very cautious to state mm-hmm. in my claims because right. I don't want to misrepresent. I don't want someone to not go from 100 pounds to 200 pounds on their bench or 500 to 1,000. All this stuff that we're talking about right now, these we're kind of splitting hairs on a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff, and this is stuff that that we believe in. Otherwise, I wouldn't have Mark share any of this with you. Mm-hmm. I just wouldn't have talked to him about it. But we're sharing it with you because I do think that it helps. I do think that it makes a difference. And for me, it's just made it fun. And I do understand if there are certain things that we're talking about that you can't afford or whatever, you know, just whatever you can afford, whatever you can apply, wherever this is applicable for you, uh, you know, start to bring in some of these things. But this is no different than when we were talking about bench press earlier, talking about preferences in terms of grips and different things. And just, you know, be willing to do some of these different things so you can kind of see what works and feels good for you. And I, again, I, for me, I found a lot of this to be fun. I found it to be, oh, I wonder what would happen if I took, you know, some of these supplements with uh, this large carbohydrate meal. You try things like, uh, uh, there's, there's a bunch of different products that can help with your uh, yeah. glucose regulation. Like when you eat a you know, large bowl of car- yeah. banaba. Right. I mean, the, the data is there. Like we're not, I'm not just pulling things out of my butthole. You know, I can, but I won't. Um, that's for later. But I mean, at the end of the day, everything I'm saying is backed by data. And I don't just make things up. Like it's all backed on human clinical data. And, you know, just to round it out, I think this makes five. We got health, we got food, we got pre-workout. And um, I'm gonna go with, um, and, and also we had the, the, the cardiovascular component right. you said. Um, and, and then I, I'd really look into some kind of an amino acid, whether it's BCAA or essential amino acids during training. You know, I actually, I'm, I'm loyal to that because I helped fund a study on it and it performed extremely well. Um, I like having 10 to 15 grams of branched amino acids during training. A lot of people say it's a waste of money. A lot of people say if you get enough protein, right. but there's an acute effect of aminos where they have a, a very a monophasic, not a biphasic spike in insulin, which means that, you know, usually when you carbohydrate, you spike once and you spike again. Whereas monophasic, you just have a little bit. And what that does, it helps get the amino acids in your muscle cell. Um, in the studies, it has been shown to help you burn fat and gain lean mass. Now, as far as affording it, at the beginning, yeah, it was expensive, but price costing has come down. And it's all very good um, fermented, which isn't like human hair derived, which I don't even know who's giving up their damn hair, but that's besides <laughs> the point. Some really bald guys in China walking around like in Wuhan, no no hair but no i mean um you know at the end of the day i think that you know they do have their place and you can literally get by i think it's like 20 cents a day to get that dosing Mm -hmm. it's not crazy expensive it's like that's like 40 cents but i think it's worth it and i do think that it helps flavor your water and it's it's just i think it adds benefit and the data for me is enough to recommend it and you'll notice that i like fish oil i mean i can go on for days Mm -hmm. like i I literally take a lot of shit. And if I recommended it, people would be spending $500 a month on their supplements. And I'm not gonna recommend that, but what I recommend is that you look at the data, you listen to people. You know, I'll take time to talk to you about it. I'm doing it right now. Mark will take time. You know, it's my job to know what I'm talking about. 
it's not your job. Like if I went and built a computer, like I, our IT guy, our CTO made fun of me for buying a, a MacBook. He's like, bro, you could have built your computer. I'm like, I'm not going to build a computer. <laughs> right. I'm going to go to some nerd and he's right. going to build me a computer. We're your supplement nerds. You know, it's our job training supplements to know this. All right. Now I'm going to back it up with data and then it's up to you. It's up to me to earn your trust. So whether you take it or not, that's fine. But if I'm going to tell you anything, get your diet in check. Get your diet in check. That's why we started there. Yep. Drink enough liquids, be hydrated, exercise and get sunlight. Those are the simple things. After that, this is all, this is all just, you know, it's, it's icing on the cake, you know, but again, supplements do help. They supplement, they supplement, they don't substitute. So we're just here to help guide you in the right direction, but look for data, look for human data, not rat data. Look for good ingredients and look for supplement companies that you trust that aren't just built on some girl's glutes on the gram. I love it. Super informative. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that information yes, with us. It's exactly uh, what I was hoping for because he got into the weeds a little bit there, but I know that you guys will uh, appreciate it. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you all later.